edition of the Demystifying Medicine series with your host, Robbie and Bobby. So, Bobby, tell me, do you like working out, lifting weights, running around? No, I hate it. I'm actually allergic to exercise. Allergic? You can't be allergic to exercise. You're just lazy. Well, that is true. I am lazy. But it turns out some people can be allergic to exercise. What are you talking about, Bobby? Well, last week during our mysterious medical condition segment, Angela, a 20-year-old girl from Hamilton, called in and told us a story about some strange symptoms she experienced when she went for a run. Let's hear what she had to say. Hey, Robbie and Bobby. I love your segment. I just wanted to share something with you guys. About a month ago, I was running on the treadmill at the gym when my chest started to feel really tight and I started to have trouble breathing. I didn't think much about it, but when I went for another run later that week, I had the same symptoms and also had several rashes appear on my body. When I saw my doctor, she sent me to an allergist who told me to monitor my diet and exercise patterns. So I realized that I was only getting these symptoms if I eat tomatoes before running. So basically, I'm allergic to exercise if I eat tomatoes. I'm seeing the allergist again soon to learn more about this, but I thought I'd share it with you guys. This is unreal. I know. I really want to learn more about this, and I'm sure our viewers are pretty interested too. So today we have a special guest, Dr. V, an allergist, will be joining us after the break, and she'll be talking to us about the whole concept of being allergic to exercise. Welcome back to the Demystifying Medicine series. Before the break, we had Angela tell us about her symptoms that she experienced after exercising. Today with us, we have Dr. B. We'll be elaborating on this fascinating situation. Hello, Dr. B, and welcome to the Demystifying Medicine series. Hey, Robbie and Bobby. Thank you for having me today. No problem, no problem. So, Doctor, Angela talked about her symptoms after she was exercising or when she went for a run. She claimed that she was allergic to exercise, but it seems to me she just has exercise-induced asthma. Am I wrong? That is a good point, Robbie. So, with exercise-induced asthma, the common symptoms include chest pain, shortness of breath, coughing, and fatigue during exercise. Although Angela did experience some of these symptoms, she also had rashes and hives appear on her body, which are not symptoms of exercise-induced asthma. So, what did she have then? Well, I don't know her specific case, and I don't know all the details, but to me it seems that Angela has a specific type of exercise-induced anaphylaxis, or EIA. What is that? Well, there are two different types of EIA, food-dependent and food-independent. In Angela's case, she has food-dependent exercise-induced anaphylaxis, or FDEIA. Can you elaborate on this? Well, FDEIA is a type of food allergy that is induced by exercise. So in Angela's case, she experienced allergic symptoms while she went for a run after she was eating tomatoes. But, I mean, if she knows that she's allergic to tomatoes, can she just not eat them? Well, with FDEIA, you aren't necessarily allergic to tomatoes separately or exercise, but it's the combination of the two together. So, in Angela's case, she can eat tomatoes and she can exercise and she feels fine, but when she eats tomatoes before exercise, that's when she'll have the symptoms. There are many other foods that can also lead to these reactions. Uh, these include wheat, shellfish, uh, alcohol, dairy products, and some other fruits and vegetables such as uh, peaches, celery, strawberries, and of course tomatoes. So Angela said that she had chest pain, shortness of breath, and some skin rashes that started to appear. Are these the only signs of FDEIA? Those are some of the most common ones, but definitely not the only ones. So itching of the skin and the appearance of hives are two of the most common symptoms. So the hives appear anywhere in the body and are quite large, very itchy, red, and quite bumpy. Uh, chest, tight, chest tightness, shortness of breath, nausea, headache, flushing of the skin, and excessive set of sweating are also some other common symptoms. Um, in addition, your throat and your lips will often swell up, which will make it harder to breathe, and some people will have a sensation that they're choking. And in really severe situations, some people will even lose consciousness. So is it only running that can cause these symptoms? Uh, running and jogging is one of the main activities associated with FDEIA, but other activities such as uh, tennis, dancing, and cycling can also induce these symptoms. Uh, for the most part, uh, about 30 minutes of moderate uh, activity is enough to induce the symptoms, and usually even if you eat the food after exercising, that can also result in the symptoms. But why does this happen? We'll find out after the break. 
Welcome back. Before the break, we were discussing what exactly in the body causes the symptoms of FDEIA. Well, to be honest, we actually don't really know. One possible cause of FDEIA is due to blood flow redistribution in your body during exercise. So, during exercise, during exercise, blood moves away from the kidneys, the liver, the stomach, and the intestine, and moves towards the skin, the heart, and your muscles. At rest, the food you absorb is tolerated well by the cells of the stomach and the intestines, but when you start exercising and the food travels to your skin, your muscles, and your heart, the cells in this area don't know how to respond to all of these new products, and, which, and the allergic symptoms that we talked about before uh, occur. Well, doctor, I did not know that. What else can you tell us about this? Well, another possible mechanism of FDEIA is due to an increased histamine release during exercise. So histamines are chemicals that are produced during an allergic response and work to get rid of something in your body that is bothering you. However, these chemicals overreact in order to protect your body and get rid of all the allergens and cause the symptoms that we talked about. So in FDEIA, the combination of exercise and the specific food results in an increased release of histamine, which leads to the allergic symptoms. So, in Angela's case, how does she know that she has FDEIA? Well, FDEIA is very rare. About 50 out of every 100,000 people have EIA, and only about 40% of these cases are FDEIA. So, how do you diagnose it? Well, Angela's allergist is on the right track for properly diagnosing her condition. Diagnosing FDEIA involves a thorough clinical history and physical exams. In addition, similar to what Angela is doing, daily diet and exercise logs are important in determining what specifically sets off the allergic reactions. There are also modified exercise challenge tests that can be done and specific allergy testing that also needs to be conducted. Since the allergic reactions can be due to various other things, it is important to prove that the symptoms are caused by the combination of exercise and a specific food in order to properly diagnose the condition. Thank you so much, Dr. B. Tune in after the break where we will wrap up the segment with what you can do if you have experienced these symptoms or have been diagnosed with FDEIA. Welcome back, folks. So, Doctor, for people with FDEIA, what do they need to do in order to treat this condition and stay safe? Can this condition be life-threatening? Yes, it definitely can be. Whoa, that's scary. Exactly. So it's super important that you pay attention to your symptoms if you do have FDEIA. What can people do? I mean, is there treatment available or is there any way to manage this condition? Well, the most important thing with FDEIA is to avoid the food that you're allergic to before exercise. Current guidelines state that you shouldn't eat the food four to six hours before exercise or one hour after. But what happens if somebody starts to experience symptoms? Well, we'll need to stop exercising immediately. And uh, what about EpiPens? EpiPens are useful in helping stop uh, anaphylaxis, but they are only used in the short term. Are there any medications then? Some medications are helpful, but once again, they're only helpful in the short term. So if you do have a severe situation, it's important that you seek medical advice to see what type of medications you should take uh, depending on the case and severity. Lastly, doctor. What do we say to those with a condition and want to continue to exercise? I mean, it's important for healthy living, is it not? Definitely is. So people with FDEIA should still continue to exercise. They just have to closely monitor any symptoms to ensure they stay healthy and safe. Supervision, supervision and professional help is needed and encouraged in a progressive manner towards exercise. Well, thank you so much for coming into our show today, Dr. B. We all learned a lot from you. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, Bobby here won't ever joke about being allergic to exercise anymore. Oh. All right. Thank you for having me, guys. Tune in next time with your favorite host, Robbie. And Bobby on the Demystifying Medicine series here at McMaster Studios. And remember, the boys are buzzing. Stay classy, Hamilton.